And so uh, our, our uh, fellowship has a discipleship training program for church planters in Hanoi. And Kong enrolled in the church planting uh, discipleship class. And mm. our missionary family, uh, who are overseeing this uh, discipleship class, are helping Kong. Kong planted a brand new church in his home. And he is the he is the first and only person in his family that is saved. And he's experiencing so much persecution, not only from his family, but from his little village where he planted his church in his home. Now, get this. Kung is 17 years old. He's married. And in spite of all this persecution and uh, uh, objection from his family, Kung feels like God has called him to do this work, to plant this church, and he is going to honor the Lord. And they've been meeting together now for a number of months, and uh, God is blessing his ministry, blessing his church, and the church is growing, and God is showing his favor. And this all-out devotion that we have uh, referenced, uh, Philip, is something that often Sandy and I have seen overseas in a number of countries. And I think if I can say today, one of the greatest distractions that our United States pastors and, and religious workers or spiritual leaders are challenged with today in our country is we have too much stuff here that distracts us and that vies for our attention and often gets our attention. But in these other countries, stuff is not a concern. And there's nothing wrong with having stuff. I, I could never say that that's a sin per se. The, the problem is not having stuff. The problem is when stuff has us. Yeah. And, and I find this is some of the greatest yeah. challenges that we've seen in the United States, that stuff has a lot of people and has distracted yeah. many people from yeah. just going all out for God to do the work that God has called them to do. So That is, that is so powerful. And, and especially today when, when this event has just happened in the last 24 hours, um, you know, I'm hearing people all the time, oh, this is the worst time in American history. It's, oh, this is terrible. Um, we don't know what terrible is in America. We have no idea what, a, what terrible is. This is, this is, a, this is a, a bad season we're going through. But I believe that America will turn itself around and, and, and the ship will right itself. But if you are that wee young boy in, in that village and everyone in the village hates you for what you've done because you are going against yeah. decades, centuries, millennia of culture. And suddenly yeah. when you take this foreign God, Jesus, and you start talking about this, this foreign God, Jesus, you are, you are risking your life and certainly your peace every day. And the yeah. church in America in particular is the most blessed, the most blessed in the world. It is. And yet we is. sometimes take what God's been dealing with me, Kevin, this last few weeks is the sin of unthankfulness. We, the, unthankfulness oh, yes. is a poison. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving yeah. and his courts right. with praise. Listen to me. You don't get to the altar to praise until you've come in with thanksgiving. Yeah. In the scripture, it yeah, says, if, if you go on against a brother, leave your offering at the altar you're, and go and make things right, then come back. So everything That's is related right. and tied to each other. And if we don't have a thankful heart, then God doesn't accept our praise. It's sounding brass and tinkling silver. And watching yeah. today, in, in a day when I know that many, many Christians are, are depressed and, and, and are, are despaired because of what's taking place in the last 24 hours. And you are going to get beaten over the head with these events for weeks and months and years to come. Believe me, you'll become so yeah. sick of what happened because they will make you eat it over and over again. Having said mm -hmm. that, Jesus is bigger than the press. Jesus is bigger than politics. And Jesus yeah. better be living inside you bigger than anything else. So today, Amen. why don't we why don't we make this commitment to be thankful for America, to be thankful for our salvation, and look at young men like Kung Kung, I think you called his name was. Yes. Yeah. Let's let's look at what he's doing 
in oh. light of what we're having to experience. And I think we're in the most blessed place. It's so true, Philip. And, and uh, this country is an amazing country. We've lived outside the country probably the past out of the past 18 years we've been in missions, we've lived overseas 16 of those 18 wow. years. Coming back into the United States, it's so prevalent to us and so obvious to us. Yeah. And I don't say this as a as a, a criticism or in condemnation. I say it as an observation sure. that there seems to be and is so much uh, apathy and complacency and lethargy. And if yeah. anything that COVID-19 has been doing is it's causing the church to realize that a lot of our ministry that has for so long been building centered needs to come out of the building and get the people out Absolutely. of the building into the community and yes. out where we can have hands on, where we can touch people's lives and being the front line of offense to be able yes. to share the good news of Jesus and his love. And uh, being indoors and confined now, and a lot of what we do, Sandy and I, behind the scenes, uh, there's been an uptick uh, exponentially uh, for pastors and missionaries worldwide and and, and cross-denominationally in uh, online internet pornography addiction. Uh, wow. Marriages wow. that are falling apart, uh, spousal abuse, uh, depression, all of these things are the result of being confined to uh, in being indoors due to COVID. And we need a breakthrough. And that's our theme for this year, a breakthrough. And, and yes. beginning this uh, next week for our 21 days of prayer and fasting for our area, uh, we're focusing on the need for breakthrough, specifically in areas where we can see our missionaries uh, uh, overcome in some of these areas. And again, Sandy and I spend time behind the scenes helping our missionaries stay focused and, and strong spiritually, emotionally, yeah. physically, and relationally. Because this this is, is I think, our final hour as we are living in I'm the in. end times prior to the coming of Jesus. And we need oh. healthy missionaries full of the Spirit and anointed yes. of God, empowered by the Spirit, to do um, what God's called us to do in this final hour. I'm watching you just now and I can I can I can see Robert Owen and your passion. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Ale Listen, Ale if you're a pastor and you're watching today, what Kevin is saying is so so appropriate for this day and this season we're in. I mean, you talk about the perfect storm between COVID and this political season that we're in, all the things yeah. that are taking place. I mean, the, the whole earth is travailing right now. We are, if you don't see the end times being played out, I, your head must be in the fridge because I'm telling you now, things are outworking yeah. every single day. You're watching the news and it's like reading the book of Revelation. But it's yeah. what, what we need to do today. I remember when Y2K, remember when the year 2000 came? And everyone yeah. thought all the computers were going to die and the, and the world was going to come. Remember those days? And what blew my mind yeah. was the church in those days, instead of being out in the, the harvest fields, the church was saying, oh, we've got to get ourselves ready. We need to be ready all the time and be looking for the opportunity yeah. to expand the kingdom of God and, and reach into people's lives. It's not, it's not your turn to get ready. Your turn to get ready has passed. You need to be ready to be used of yeah. God in these days because I believe that the Bible says in the, in, the, in, the, in the days will come that the whole earth will be filled with His glory. And Amen. we are His voice. We are Jesus. Right. We, we are Him in the world. And I'm yeah. telling you now, I can see nothing but opportunity in these moments. Listen to me. A pastor friend of mine yesterday said to me that half the churches in his area have closed down. Half of the churches. And he was talking out of a, a sense of, oh my goodness, what's happened? I said, listen to me. What an opportunity for you to gather in these folks and repurpose them in the kingdom of God and focus them in vision. Yeah. And so instead of looking at all, everything, my dad, I can, I can hear Simon Cameron. Two men looked out of prison bars. One saw mud while the other saw stars. And if you're a mystery, like Kevin Barner is, not just a mission, be a mystery for yourself, but helping other people maintain their calling and, and their ministry. Let me tell you, you better know whom you have believed and be persuaded that he's able to keep what you've committed. 
And uh, so if you're a pastor watching, if you're a pastor watching just now, I'm going to put up their, air, their, their address on the screen. And you need to do two things. Why don't you consider supporting Kevin and, and Sandy in their mission work that they're doing? Coming soon, they're going back on the field imminently. Uh, just, it's going to happen as soon as, I, if, if I know missionaries, it's going to happen as soon as their support comes through. But if you're a pastor, yeah. why don't you include them in your mission giving? Or better still, invite them to your church to share what the Lord has done through them. And I've, I've learned this, that I got my mission calling by hearing people talk about the mission field. And if I go to a mission conference, I'm schizophrenic because when I hear someone talk about Africa, I, I'm called to Africa. And then someone goes up and talks about India. Yes, Lord, send me to India. I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm talking to you just now, Kevin, and I'm thinking, how can we start uh, the, these, these houses in, 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 in our ministry in, in, uh, in Thailand? Because my heart yeah. is open for any, any voice God wants to speak to me through. To talk to me how to get involved with the world. Don't sit. If your world consists of you alone, you live in a tiny world. Oh my. And Jesus yeah. said the fields are white under harvest and the laborers. It's not the harvest that's a problem. It's the laborers that's the problem.